Bluehost WordPress tutorial. Let's get to it. What's up, everybody? My name is David, WebsiteCreatorPro.com. So you have your shared hosting account with Bluehost. What are some things that you should know, but you probably don't if you're brand new to having a hosting account? That is the goal of this video. I wanna basically share with you some things that you need to know uh, about having a Bluehost account and how to better optimize your website and just have a good overall user experience if you're going with Bluehost as your web host. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing is add-on domain names. What an add-on domain name is, is how you add additional domain names to your account. So most of the Bluehost hosting plans allow you to have unlimited domain names. So how do you actually take advantage of that? Uh, that's what I wanna show you right now. So your hosting account comes with unlimited domain names. So how do you actually add a domain name to your account? Very easy. You just navigate over to domains in Bluehost. And then you want to go to assign. I know you think like, oh, I click on add domain, right? No, wrong. What add domain is, is basically it allows you to register a domain name through Bluehost. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend using a domain name register like Namecheap. So anyways, you want to go down to where it says assign. And then with assign, you want to click on use a domain name that is not already associated with your account. Go ahead and put in your domain name there, and then it will verify whether or not your domain name is able to be added, whether you have ownership over the domain name. And so for example, you're gonna have to go into your domain name. So for example, this is my add-on domain name, chemistryofattraction.com, and I have it set up to have custom DNS, and then the name server is NS1, NS1 Bluehost and NS2 Bluehost. And that's it. And so once you do that, it'll verify that your domain name is able to be added to your account. Then make sure that this is selected where it says add on domain name and then use an existing category. No, you want to create a new directory for your uh, for your uh, add on domain. And it can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So it could just be like example or it could just be like X, like three letters, A, B, C, whatever you want. It's OK. And so we'll just do like pretend it's like A, B, C. And so then you'll be able to create a new domain for your account and it'll be an add-on domain. So then assign this domain name to your hosting account. That's it. Next, you'll have a subdomain right here. And so the subdomain is just for cPanel purposes. It's just the way it's structured where you have no choice over this. So any add-on domain is going to be a subdomain of the primary account for cPanel purposes. If you're like, what the heck is cPanel? If you click on your advanced tab, and then this is your cPanel area right here. Okay, so basically the primary domain name is whatever the primary domain name is for your account. That's how it works. Now, one issue I have with Bluehost is that when you do add a domain to your account, make sure to go over here and go to redirect. And so now you want to click on the, for example, you want to click on the subdomain. So coa.davidyuki.com is the subdomain for this domain right here for chemistryofattraction.com. Okay, so this is the subdomain for my add-on domain. Now the issue with uh, Bluehost is that it sometimes doesn't redirect this properly. So that means people will be able to go to coa.davidyuki.com and it will be the same exact website as chemistryofattraction.com. Uh, so you don't want that because that's duplicate content. You don't want to have two URLs that are literally the same exact website. And so you just come in here, permanent 301 redirect go to your subdomain and then redirect it to your actual website. And then you want to redirect with or without the WW. And then you want to go to make this a wildcard redirect and then add this redirect. And that takes care of the entire issue. And so that's basically how you add a domain to your account with Bluehost. Number two is that you can set a professional email for your Bluehost account for free, okay, on the back end. That means you can have hello at yourwebsite.com for free. You don't need to use G Suite or any of these other paid uh, software. You can completely do it for free, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Let's set up a professional email with our Bluehost account. Now, I know you normally would think like, yeah, I go to email and office, right? Wrong. Email and office is basically an upsell for uh, Office 360 and G Suite. So Bluehost makes an affiliate commission if you buy through these links. The real way to do it is actually to click on the advanced tab right here. Now, when you click on the advanced tab, what you'll be looking at now is your C panel. And now within C panel, you want to navigate over to where it says email accounts, open up email accounts, and then you're presented with this little dashboard to create email accounts. And it's very simple. 
So all you have to do is click on this blue uh, create button. And once you do that, then you can set up a username, password, and the storage space. Then go ahead and click create. And that is it. That's all there is to it. So I went ahead and created a professional email called hello at davidyuki.com. And that's it. And so to check your email, all you have to do is click this button to check email. And then what happens is that this will open up into the basically web host email section for Horde, Roundcube, Squirrelmail. These are just email clients. Uh, these are server side email clients to check your email. And so if you want to check your email for your professional email accounts, you have to always log in the Bluehost. You always have to go to check email here, then go into one of these three uh, email clients to view your email. Now, if you're like, David, I don't want to do that. I want to set up with Gmail. How do I do that? Very easy, actually. So first thing is now that we have this email set up, go into cPanel again. So we'll go navigate back to advanced. This time we want to go to forwards. And so what a forward is, is exactly what it sounds like. And so the email address is our professional email. So I want to set it up so when anyone sends an email to hello at davidyuki.com, it automatically gets forwarded to a Gmail account of my choosing. So I went ahead and set up a Gmail account. Now to do that, you just go here, add forward. That's it, not add domain forward, wrong. You wanna click this one, add forward, and then it's a simple on-screen process about how to set it up. You just go here, address uh, address to forward, so that would be like hello, for example, then the domain name's there, forward to email address here, and then add forward, that's it. And so what ends up happening is that you end up being able to receive emails. So if we take a look at this, this was sent from this email, this Gmail account, and I sent it to hello at davidyuki.com, but this is my Edge of David Gmail account. So the forward is working correctly. Now the issue is like when I reply, because <laughs> like when I reply to this email, it's going to be from edgeofdavid at gmail.com. It's not going to be from the professional email I just set up. So that's a big issue. So how do you fix that? That's the, what you have to do in Gmail is set up an alias. So in order to do that, you go over here to where the gear icon is. You go into settings. Okay, so let's click on settings. And then once we're here, we want to go to accounts and import. And then right down there, send mail as. Okay, so you can use Gmail to send your other email from other email addresses. Okay. And so right here is where we can add another email address. You just click on this. Now the email address we want to add is basically the professional email we just created. Then you just click on next step. So let me go ahead and actually, let me just go ahead and delete this. Okay, let me just go ahead and start over. All right, so we'll just go ahead and add it. Hello, boom, next step. And now we have our username and password. So the username is the email that you just created and the password is the basically the password you created to log into this email account, okay? And so let me just go ahead and do that. Let me just log in. Okay, let me click on add accounts. Okay, and now it says congratulations. We just sent an email verification to hello at the custom domain name that you just set up. And now enter the verification code here. Now, because we have email forwarding set up, it should be sent to our Gmail account. And so we go here and then we come here and then everything's working correctly. We take this code right there and then highlight this, copy, and then you next navigate here, paste it in, verify, and that is it, okay? Now you're able to basically, when you're replying to emails, you can set it up to be replying from your Gmail or your professional email. And so you wanna do that. So when people send your email, send you an email to your professional email account, you can reply back with this email as well from your Gmail account. Now to actually send an email as this email address, as this professional email address, you just click this button right there, click on compose, and then from this little drop down, you can select the professional email. So now I can send email from hello at davidyuki.com. Now, it, how to reply to email. Now that's a little bit more tricky, so you wanna make sure to go back into your settings, and then you want to go into accounts and import. And now here is where you want to have it set to reply from the same email address that the message was sent to. So that means that if someone sends an email to your professional email account and you reply to it from your Gmail account from here, this Gmail account, it will automatically reply from the professional email. Okay, it won't be using the Gmail account. So make sure just to set this reply from the same email address. And that is it.
And number three, how to better optimize your website for a better user experience, how to make it faster, how to, what are just things that you need to know. Uh, that's what I want to share with you in this section. So let's get to it. Two essential plugins for any shared hosting account, be it Bluehost or any other shared hosting account, I would say are Smush and W3 Total Cache. So you want to type in and go to plugins, go to add new, and then search for something called Smush It. It looks like this, Smush Compress, Optimize, and Lazy Load Images. Go ahead and install and activate it. And then you want to search for W3 Total Cache right here, install and activate it. Now this is W3 Total Cache. Right out of the box, everything's set up correctly the way you'd want. So right here, I'm in performance dashboard. So when you add W3 Total Cache, you'll have a little option over here in your WordPress sidebar. I would leave everything as is if you're on a shared hosting account. So paid caching, you can enable or disable this. That's really up to you to see if it makes a performance difference. But rest of this, I would leave it alone. So I would have MinFi be auto, object cache, database cache. Uh, I would leave these alone. If you're on a shared hosting account, it's not appropriate because it causes more of a server load. So it uses up more of your resources, not really worth it. And then I would enable browser caching. But again, again, right out of the box, this thing is all set up correctly. So just go ahead and install W3 Total Cache, activate it, and then you're getting the benefits of W3 Total Cache. Now, next is Smush. So you'll have an option called Smush in your sidebar here what smush does is basically it compresses images and so you can basically recheck images and every time you upload an image in a blog post it autom smush it will automatically compress the image to be more optimal and these are two free plugins okay now the first one that you should also know about is short pixel because short pixel is basically a premium image optimization plugin so it's the kind of the big brother to smush. So if you're looking for a premium plugin that does a better job, short pixel, I would go with. And then a superior plugin over W3 Total Cache is WP Rockets. This is a better performing cache plugin. It's a premium plugin, you have to pay for it. But again, if you're on a shared hosting account, you have a new website, W3 Total Cache and Smush It are fine. I'm just letting you know your options as you uh, build up a website, what to look out for as you have a larger website. I would recommend getting Short Pixel and a WP Rocket once you get a larger established website. And last, just overall design, just for design of a website, keep your images and video to a minimum, like a small logo, maybe a text-based logo. And then when it comes to adding images into your blog post, only add images if it demonstrates something. I really shy away from just adding decorative images just because it looks nice or you think it looks cool. I really just focus on any image that's added has a clear and specific purpose. So you'll notice like how I structure blog posts here. There's no big image right at the top of the blog post. Like right here we have the title, breadcrumbs, and we get right into the text. And that's intentional because it makes the site load more quickly. I have a minimal, minimal menu bar here, again, because that helps the site load more quickly. A small logo that's just text-based. All these things are done intentionally to make the site faster. Now I do use featured images for my blog post but I don't have it enabled on the actual blog post itself because again what is the point of loading some big slow image right at the top it doesn't add anything to the uh, post and it just makes your website load more slowly so anyways those are my tips for how to optimize your uh, website on your shared hosting account with Bluehost all right that's it for this WordPress Bluehost tutorial I hope you enjoyed it if you did consider subscribing hit that like button I publish videos on a weekly basis so consider subscribing anyways I'll see you next video my name is David website creativepro.com take care and bye bye